my sense is that the worm is about to turn, as they say. The economy has been held together since the, since the crash of 2008, basically by bailing wire and bubble gum. The, the bailing wire is the inflation, the pouring of money by the Fed into the economy. And, uh, you know, they do this by, by buying t so-called toxic assets, in other words, bad loans from banks and, you know, bonds and CDOs and things like that. And they also buy treasuries as a way of, you know, inflating the money supply and, and injecting money into our economy. So the, the Fed has been uh, artificially holding down borrowing rates so that companies can, can uh, and, and you know, giant corporations and very, very wealthy individuals can borrow money at basically 1% or less. And, uh, and then those corporations are very glad to loan it to you and me for 29 or 32 percent or more. Uh, you know, some of them are even running in, you know, the, the, the payday lending business, you know, where it's 500, four, 500 percent a year. And it's, it's very, very profitable for these wealthy people and these big corporations, but it basically screws America. A report came out yesterday that we are $1.2 trillion in debt in the United States just with, you know, revolving credit, with credit card debt and things like that, which is, uh, you know, something that we've never seen before, that level of debt. We have now surpassed where we were in 2008. And to a large extent, you know, that, you know, the debt that we had then caused the crash. So the, the bailing wire is basically the free money. The bubble gum that has been holding the economy together is psychological. And, you know, it's, it's essentially Wall Street's belief that Donald Trump is going to help out Wall Street. Keep in mind, Wall Street, the state of the Dow, the state of the standards and poor, these are not reflections of the health of our economy. They are reflections of the ability of, of, of you know, very, very wealthy people to keep inflating the value of their investments. But also keep in mind that when the stock market goes down, very wealthy people make out like bandits too. In fact, this is something that, you know, I wish that when I was a kid, my dad had sat me down and taught me. And, you know, if you have children, you may want to sit your kids down and tell them this, that every five, six, seven, eight, at the very most nine years, between every six and nine years, capitalism fails. It, it has always done this. This is how Warren Buffett got insanely rich. You don't have to absolutely time the market. All you have to know is every six, seven, eight, nine years, every, you know, every cycle, the market's going to fall. It won't necessarily be a depression, but it'll be a drop. And then if you buy like crazy on that drop, then you ride it back up to the top over the next five or six years, and then you sell. So buy low, sell high, right? We've heard this for years. It actually is true. And if I had just started doing this with, you know, a few hundred dollars when I was 20 years old, I'd be insanely rich right now. And like I said, this is how Warren Buffett became one of the richest guys in the world, is basically just doing this. You buy stocks when the market is going up, when it's from the bottom as it's going up, and you sell them when it hits the top and starts going back down. So the psychology of the market is, hey, it's still going up. It's still going up. Now, why is it still going up, still going up? Because the psychology of the market is tied into this belief that stocks will benefit when rich people have more money. Now, why would stocks benefit when rich people have more money? Very, very, because, you know, rich people aren't buying more stuff. The founder of the Patriotic Millionaires on this program uh, a couple of years ago, you know, he said, uh, Tom, how many pairs of pants do you have? And I'm like, I don't know, you know, six, eight, nine, something like that. And he's like, yeah, me too. But I get, I, but I have 10,000 times more money than you do. But I don't need 10,000 times more pants. So if rich people get more money, why would that cause the stock market to go up? Because they're not going to buy more stuff. And buying more stuff is what stimulates demand in the marketplace. And that demand is what makes money for 
corporations. So why is it that rich people getting more money makes the market go up? Because they need some place to put that money. So, you know, what's been happening is that the very, very wealthy in this country have been just sucking down the cash ever since Reaganomics was put into place. And in fact, you really want to have your eyes pop out of your head. Just, you know, go on the internet and track down a chart of the stock market from 1960 to today or 1950 to today. And yes, yeah, slow and steady rise through the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. And then we got into the Reaganomics era where rich people started getting really insanely rich, really, really fast. And you look at the 90s and the 2000s and the 2010s and now, and the stock market has just exploded. It's like, it's almost a logarithmic rise. Why? Because rich people have all that more money and they need to put it someplace so they put it in the stock market. So you've got the bailing wire and the, and the bubble gum, right? Or the barbed wire and the bubble gum holding the economy together. The, 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 the cheap money, the free money and the psychology. And Janet Yellen has been signaling, you know, it's time to dial back the free money. But she also knows that the minute she starts doing that in a really serious and consequential way, um, you know, we don't raise a, a hundred basis points. It's a hundred hundredths of a point or a hundred thousandth of a point. Uh, instead, we're going to, we're going to raise it, you know, a, uh, you know, 500 basis points. We're going to raise it a whole half a, half a point, the interest rates, or we're going to raise them a whole point. At that point, it becomes much more expensive to borrow for big corporations, and so they cut back on, on their borrowing, and this starts, this unravels the, number one, it reduces the money supply, because money in the, the money supply in the United States is literally loaned into existence by banks. When our money supply expands, it's because banks are doing more lending. When our money supply contracts, which happens with every recession, it's because banks are doing less lending. Banks create our money. They're, they're sitting on a million dollars in deposits. That means they can loan out $10 million. When they loan out, you know, the $10 million, $9 million just got created out of thin air, just as a bookkeeping entry on the bank's books. So this is the system. So now what comes along? So the belief has been that Republicans having the House, the Senate, and the White House, and the Supreme Court, means that they will be able to successfully cut taxes on rich people even more and cut taxes on big corporations so they can shovel more of that money passing through to rich people. So rich people will get even richer and have to put their money in the stock market. So the stock market is continually going up in anticipation of this. So what happens if you've, if you've followed all this and you get all, you know, where we're at right now and how we got here and why, what happens when the psychology falls apart? We just, we just covered what happens when the free money falls apart. What happens if the Fed dials back? Well, you know, Janet Yellen is, you know, going very slow on this. I, I would be surprised to see an interest rate hike by the end of the year. But Janet Yellen is supposed to be replaced next year at the beginning of the, I believe it's in January, that the Donald Trump has an opportunity to appoint a new Fed chair. Now, is, is it going to be Yellen or is it going to be some right-wing crank? If he puts some right-wing crank in there and they start messing with interest rates, boom, we're in a depression. Because that's the, the bailing wire, right? The bubblegum part of it is, is this, and this is huge. And I've kind of buried the lead here because this is where I was starting, the psychology of the marketplace. And that is that if the market comes to believe that Donald Trump has so screwed up things, He's got, you know, he's angered his own Republican senators. He's, he's tweeting out this morning against Jeff Flake and, 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 and uh, Lindsey Graham. If he has so screwed things up that he can't get his tax cuts passed, then rich people are not going to get that extra trillion dollars that they're going to put in the stock market. So the stock market's not going to go up another trillion dollars. And when that happens, this wildly overvalued stock market is going to start to collapse. So this is my prediction of what's going on. And I think that, frankly, we're at that moment right now. Now, this is just my opinion, and I have been so wrong on the stock market so many times. Please don't make investment decisions based on what I'm saying. But I'm looking at this thing, and I'm thinking, okay, the money supply thing is like, you know, it's just, it's so fragile. 
and the psychology thing is just about to fall apart.